Nobody loves word problems, and I understand why. But we're going to look at word problems with quadratic equations. And um, I think as far as word problems go, I think this is a lot better than stuff like distance equals rate times time stuff. So let's take a look. So what we're going to find is um, I always set up my dictionary here. So I'm trying to think what it would be on this one. So I want to make sure I understand that what it is that I'm trying to find. Now, um, I'm just going to define, we are translating from the English language and math language. So they've given us English here. I want to translate this, and this is going to be my little dictionary. So I know that the first of those numbers is something, and the second is something else. Now, we're going to build one of these numbers off of the other. Um, yeah, so we've got two consecutive odd integers. They didn't make this easy on us. So I'm going to call the first one I don't know, and I'm going to build the second one based off the other. Now this is really confusing. This is a tough one to start with. But do you see that if the first number, suppose it turned out to be 7, do you see that the next odd number is 9? This gives people a lot of trouble, but the next odd number is still two steps away. It isn't one or three, it's still two steps. So if you were doing even numbers, it's two steps. If it's odd numbers, it's still two steps. So this dictionary looks the same, whether it was consecutive even numbers or consecutive odd. So we don't know the first one, and it's two steps to the next odd integer. Now they're telling us that we want the product of these two things, so we're going to multiply the two of them and that that is 195. Okay, well we've got an equation set up now. We've taken English and turned it into math language. Now let's see how they did here. Now they should called it n, but that's fine. So now they're distributing this. We'd get n squared plus 2n equals 195. So right here. Okay, now here's where this is relevant to this section. How do we solve it? It's got a square in it. We're going to pull the 195 to the other side. And now, I mean, I don't think there's any way to factor this, so uh, what we're going to do is use the quadratic equation, and we'd get down to this. Okay, so it's just the quadratic equation, and it tidies up to these two. Okay, so it turns out that there are two different ways that this can be done. It could happen if your first number is 13, then that makes the second 15. It also can happen if your first number is negative 15. I know this is weird, but if you have negative 15, isn't the next odd integer negative 13? So there's two ways that you can have this occur. Okay, so let's do a couple of these. So I'm going to do my first. I recommend you always do the dictionary, but that is up to you. So my first one is I don't know. The second number is built off of that. It's also an odd one, so that's two steps away. So I'm going to have their product equals 99. So distribute this, I get x squared plus 2x. Now I'm going to go ahead and swing this over here. That equals 0. Okay, now factoring this would be very difficult, so we're going to do the quadratic. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, oops, that's a negative 99, all over 2 times a. Okay, we're going to tidy this up. I get 4 minus, what will that be under there? I don't know. Oh, I guess I should know. That's kind of easy, actually. Okay, now it was two negatives, so I'm going to have plus 396. Okay, so I'm going to carry this down over here. Negative 2 plus or minus square root of 400 would be 20. So a lot of tidying up to do here, but negative 2 plus 20 would be 18 over 2. Negative 2 minus 20 would be negative 22 over 2. So our possibilities are 9 or negative 11. 
Now, it asked for the to find the integers, so we need to find them both. So if 9 is our first odd one, our next odd one would be 11. If it turns out it's negative 11, our first odd, odd one, our consecutive odd one would be negative 9. I'll let, do this again here. I'm going to set up my dictionary. So they're doing exactly the same one. I wish they'd vary a little bit. Two consecutive odds got the same thing. So my formula is their product is 168. So I've got x squared plus 2x. Now I'm going to bring that 168 because to do the quadratic we need it set up like this. Okay, now negative b plus or minus b squared is just 4 minus 2ac all over 2a. Alrighty then. So what do we got inside of there? So I got negative 2 plus or minus 4 plus. So double negative with the negative 2 and negative 168. Okay, so I've got negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 340 all over 2. Hmm. Are they going to give, give us something that doesn't have a square root? Hold on. I, uh, somebody's messed up. It's probably me. Negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus, oh, here it is, sorry, 4ac. So I needed 4 times 168. So I should have had, this number should have been 672 plus 4, 676 is what I should have had under here. Now I'm assuming that has a square root. I don't know it, but let's find out. Yeah, that says square root of 26. So I'm coming over here just because I'm running out of room. Okay, so I missed my b squared minus 4ac is where I'd messed up. Okay, negative 2 plus 26 would give me 24 over 2. Or negative 2 minus 26 gets me negative 28 over 2. So my possibilities here are 12 or negative 14. So if you get, you got to give me, they wanted the integers. So 12 and 14 are one possible set and negative 14 and negative 12 are the other. Okay, now we've moved to triangles. So here's what they're telling us as we read through the story. <clears throat> they're giving us the area of this triangle and they're telling us that we have that we don't know the height but that we know that the let's see okay so we know the width is four feet more than twice the height so we've got four feet more than twice the height so a dictionary would be good here there's our dictionary now a picture would be helpful as well this is what they're saying Okay, so they told us the area, so we need a formula for this one. Well, that's area is one-half the base times the height. And if we just plug in, we create this. The area equals one-half the base times the height. Now, we multiply through again like we did before, and it tidies up to be this. Now, set it up for the quadratic, and we're just going to be doing the same thing we did. We solve using the quadratic, we get these two possibilities here. But notice that one of the heights turns out to be a negative number. Well, you can't have a negative height, not in this universe anyway. So that is not acceptable, and we drop it, and we're just going to go with h being 10. Now, if they asked we wanted the height and the width, plug it back into our dictionary at the beginning. That was 2h plus 4, so the width of the triangle is 24. Okay, I think they should be calling this the base of the triangle, but that's okay. We'll go with it. So I've got, they're telling us the height is, I don't know. And they're telling us, the, I'm going to say the base. The base is four more than six times that height. 
Okay, I'm going to write it. I should do it like this, probably. Now, it read like this, four more than six times the height, but we normally write algebraic stuff like this. Okay, now they're telling us the area is 208, so we need a formula. Well, the area is one-half the base times the height. So I've got x times 6x plus 4, all of that with a one-half in front. So I'm just plugging it into my area formula equals 208. Now, I'm going to think of this as one-half x and send that through. I would get 3x squared plus 2x. You see what I'm doing? I'm just sending all of that through there, and I get this. I'm going to move my 208 over to this side. That equals 0. Okay, so we're going to do our quadratic now. We've got negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4a c all over 2a. Let's see what we get. That's a 208. I need to not forget that. Okay, the double negatives are going to make this a positive, and I got 2,496 over 6. Okay, so 2,500, if you square that, square root that. Oh, that was obvious, but I'm not seeing it. Okay, we get down to this. All right, so we got negative 2 plus 50 over 6. would get me 48 over 6. And negative 2 minus 50 would give me negative 52 over 6. So these are my options. Now, I'm going to stop on this one right away because this is a negative option, and we're talking about height. So that is not possible. But if I solve this down, I get x is Now, uh, let's see, do they want both? Find the dimensions. So I now know what x is. So my height, go back to my dictionary, my height is x. So I know the height is now 8. And I'd put a unit on it if it gave yeah, it's inches, so I should put a unit on it, 8 inches. Now my base, or my width, according to what they said, is going to be 6 times 8 plus 4, because that's what I said it was. So I've got 48 plus 4, 52 inches. And I got it. Okay, let's do another one here. I've got my height. I'm going to call, I don't know. I'm going to call, I'm going to call it my base. So it's two feet less than twice the width of the base. So remember, less than makes you go the wrong way around. So do you see that it turns out to be that? Okay, they gave me the area, so I'm putting it into one half area equals one half base times height. So I've got one half x times two x minus two equals one ten. Now I'm going to distribute the one half and x as if they're together, and I'm going to get x squared minus x. I'm then going to bring the, the one ten over to the other side so I can do the quadratic. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. Okay, so I'm going to get 1 plus or minus square root of 1 plus 440 all over 2. So 1 plus or minus the square root of 441. That has a square root, or did I mess up again? Huh. Okay, it does. All right, so coming back over here for some space, I've got 1 plus or minus 21 over 2. So this is 1 plus 21 gets me 22 over 2, or 1 minus 21 gets me negative 20 over 2. But this is not going to be a height. I don't have negative height, so I can drop that guy, and so I get 11. So going back to my dictionary, my height is going to be 
11 square feet this time. And my base is going to be 2 times 11 minus 2. Sorry, it's out of room and getting messy. So there's my height. This is 22 minus 2, or 20 square feet. So I know that's hard to read. Hopefully you followed that. It's the same as the last one there, but just went back to my dictionary and ran out of space. Okay, let's see what we're talking about now. Okay, so I'm going to jump ahead and see what we're talking about here. So they're telling us that we are looking for, hold on, I don't really understand what they're saying. Okay, so he's got two 10-foot string of lights. He will attach the lights to the top of the pole. Okay, so he wants this and this to be the same. That's what this is saying. All right, so did they give us... Oh yeah, so, all right, so what would we do with this? We're gonna just work with one side of this. Does it want the distance between? Okay, it only wants the distance from the base of the pole to each stake, so this is a confusing picture, but I only need the distance from here to here. I only need X. All right, so if I had a picture like this, I am looking for, get rid of that out of there, I have a right triangle that told us. I've created a right triangle. And you may not have thought of this right off the top of your head, but what they're getting at is our formula is the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Because these are the same, I'm going to drop that in. I've got X squared plus X squared equals 10 squared. Okay, this is a really weird setup, but this is what they're saying. This would then make 2X squared equals 100. Now, we don't even need the quadratic on this. We can use the square root uh, theorem here, the idea that I can just isolate the x squared. Now, square rooting that, I get x is plus or minus the square root of 50. Okay, now, I know that 5 squared of 2 doesn't seem like a number to you, like it's strange, but it, it is. We could do this on our calculator. And we're going to ignore the negative here because we can't have a negative distance there for x. Yeah, I wondered if they finished it. So they ignored the negative. And you can crunch this on your calculator. 5 times the square root of 2 gets you about 7.1. So this was the distance from his tree to his stake. It was about 7.1 feet, I guess it was. Okay. Okay, so we've got a shadow here, and we've got a flagpole that's three times the height of that shadow. Now, if we know that this distance is 20 feet, they're telling us from there to there is 20. Well, what we've got here is another Pythagorean theorem situation, where I've got a squared plus b squared equals 20 squared. So I've got 9x plus x squared equals 400. Oh, 9x squared, sorry. That's 10x squared equals 400. Okay, well, I don't even need the quadratic again. I can just isolate the x squared. So dividing both sides by 10, I get 40. So x is plus or minus the square root of 40. Now, we don't need the negative. So we've got our answer is the positive square root of 40. We can't have a negative distance. So the this is 2 square root of 10, and I'm going to do that on my calculator. Okay, so I get x is about 6.324. I'm assuming, yeah, that was feet. So the shadow is 6.324. It wants the length of the flagpole as well, so we would just multiply that by 3. So I guess about 19. Okay, hold on. Let me see what else we got left here. Yeah, unfortunately, we got a couple different variations. This runs long on word problem days, so hang with me. Okay. 
So I'm going to set up my little picture here. So here's what they're telling me. I hope this makes some sense. The distance between the opposite corners of a rectangular field. Okay. This is four more than the width of the field. So this distance is x plus four. The length of the field uh, is twice its width. I, I think I drew my picture the wrong way, but let me double check and make sure I've got this right. Four more than the width, and the length is twice the width. Okay. So here's my setup, and if I wanted my dictionary, I should probably do it on this one that's confusing. So I've got So I built this with, my width is I don't know, my length is two times the width. Okay, now the idea that they're assuming you realize is that this would make a right triangle. So I have x squared plus 2x squared, so I'm doing the Pythagorean theorem again, is x plus 4 squared. Now math is going to be a little harder, let's see what we get. We get x squared plus 4x squared. Now you'd have to foil this out or you might realize that there's a shortcut on this. I'm going to get x squared plus 8x plus 16 over here. So let's see what we get when we tidy this up. Send this over. Yeah, I, You could go either way to make this room empty but I never want a quadratic to start with a negative in front so I'm going to send everybody to this side. So you see if you subtract x squared you're going to have 4x squared. I'm going to bring everyone over, and I get this. Okay, now we could do the quadratic right here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out a GCF of a 4. And the reason I'm doing that is that I want to work with this instead. So I'm trying to see if, can that factor? X. No, it can't. So I'm going to, I'm, now I can ignore the 4. It's going to get me, I can, it's like we could divide both sides by 4. So all I'm going to need to do is the quadratic on this x squared. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so I'm going to get some weird numbers here, but so I, I need some space. 2 plus or minus 2 square root of 5 over 2. Now I can pull a GCF of a 2 out of there if I don't run out of room. And those 2s will then cancel. So I want 1 plus or minus the square root of 5. Now I don't need to worry about the minus. So I want to find out what 1 plus the square root of 5 is. And it turns out to be 3.236. Okay, now that was the value of x. So I don't know what this is. Feet, I guess. It, I don't even know if it tells us. So x is 3.236. It wants the distance between the opposite corners. We'll go back to our diagram here. The distance between the opposite corners was x plus 4. So my answer is going to be 7. 0.236. Again, feet, I guess. Okay. So we have this situation here. We he wants a hundred and fifty square feet. So for his fencing in his backyard. So they tell us that the width is the length. Here's our dictionary. The width is I don't know, but the length can be built. It is one less than three times the width. So I've got this here. Yeah, make sure that's what they told me. Now, 
we need a formula and the formula is the area of a rectangle is the length times the width they told us the area and we create this which then simplifies we can then set it up so we can do the quadratic on it and from that point the math is unpleasant but it's all the same thing we get a positive value and a negative value well it can't be that one so we found the width and we know the length because we're going back to our dictionary just putting that the width that we found in there, we can also find the width. Okay, so we're doing a similar idea here. I'm going to start with my picture. They tell me I've got area, so I'm going to do area is length times width. So it's area of a rectangle. So they're telling us the length, so I'm going to say my width here is I don't know. And my length is 4 less than twice that width. So 4 less than twice that width would be this. So my width is, I don't know, my length is 2x minus 4. Now I've got my dictionary set up. Let's go ahead and solve it. Area is length times width. Well, that's x times 2x minus 4. They told me my area is 200. So I'm going to get 2x squared minus 4x. Now I'm going to bring the 200 over so I can be ready to do the quadratic. Now it would work right now if you just did the quadratic, but because I see they're all even numbers, I'm going to make my math a little easier. So I pulled out that GCF of a 2 and I can disregard it. I'm going to do the quadratic just on this guy. So negative, negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4ac all over 2a. <clears throat> so 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus 400, be careful of your signs, over 2. 4 plus or minus the square root of 404 over 2. Okay. I don't think 404 is going to have a square root. Yeah, it doesn't. So we could simplify this down and then take the square root, but I know I'm going to need that number anyway. So I can disregard the negative value of this, and I'm going to do that. So I've got 4, and I did the square root of 404. So 4 plus this becomes 24.0997. Just did that with my calculator over 2. Okay, now I'm going to divide that by 2, and I'm getting an x value of 12.049. Okay, it's around to the nearest tenth of a foot. I should have done that on the other one, so I've got basically 12. So remember how to round to this spot. You look behind it. you got a 4 there, so I'd make this 12. So if I want both dimensions, which I'm, the, yeah, it does want both, go back to my dictionary. I know this is 12. So my length must be 2 times 12 minus 4. So that's 24 minus 4, or 20. And it looks like everything here is feet. So there's my width. There is my length. OK, I just want to see if we've got variation. This is approaching 30 minutes here. Let me see what else we got here. Yeah. Let me do this one instead. I'm going to jump ahead because it's been the same thing. Um, okay, the biggest application of quadratic problems is projectile motion. So they make the same shape. If you like launch a projectile off a roof or wherever, it makes the same shape as x squared, and which we'll see in, in a coming up section. It, it makes this arch. And so for physics problems, this is really good because we can find where it hits the ground. You could find where it gets to the top, which we'll see in the next section. And so we have the formula here, and it's a quadratic formula. So let's see what they tell us. We're going to put it to use here. OK. So they're telling us, we want to know when we would get to 260 as a height. Well, that's right here. And they've told us our initial velocity is 130. Well, that goes into the formula right there. So all I've done is I put in my initial velocity, I put in my height, and now we're working another quadratic problem. 
Now, notice this one. I get two positive answers when I crunch this, and that's true. Because it shoots like this, there are two places where it would reach that height. It hits it here, then it keeps going up, and it's going to hit it again on the opposite side, the symmetrical side. So it goes up, comes back down. There are two times at which we would strike that. Okay, let's try one of these. So we're looking for a height of 180. So I'm putting in 180. They told us an initial velocity of 108. So I've just plugged everything into my equation. Now I'm going to set this up so I've got I've got to set it equal to zero. All right, we could do the quadratic right now, but I'm going to double check. I'm going to see if 16 goes into all of these. No, unfortunately it doesn't. So we're just going to have some bad math here. Okay, so, wow, this is going to be unpleasant. Negative b, oh, hold on. I lost, lost the t out of there. So negative 108 plus or minus the square root. Mm, you know what, hold on. I'm going to... I'm going to go back a second. I don't want to work with that negative there. I'm going to send everybody to the other side. I, it really won't matter, but I'm going to make it this. I don't ever like to work them with the negative. Okay, so I just sent these guys the other way, so I could get positive values to start with. Okay, so I've got negative b. It's going to get me 108 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 a c all over 2 a now this isn't going to be very much fun but let's try to crunch it we'll see what we get here so I get Okay, let's do what's inside of that square root. Oh, that's good. Okay, so I get a nice square root inside of there. So I'm going to get 108 plus or minus, that is 12, isn't it? Yeah, plus or minus 12 over 32. Okay, so I've got 120 over 32, or I have 3.75, so or yeah, I should have seen that. Okay, so here are my two possible times. There are two times where it's going to be 180 feet up from the ground, and it's because it makes this arch. It's going to be here at three point or three seconds after shooting it, and again at 3.75. Okay, these are really complicated and time-consuming. This video has gone on. I'm going to skip that. And uh, hopefully that makes some sense. If you're having a hard time with word problems. What I always do in a, in a class is I show each of the exact type like we have in this video, and then I have people just match them up until they get more comfortable. So if you're working these and you don't see how to do them, go back through the video, look here at some notes, and see so you can exactly match them up until you start to feel a little more confident.